this is just a follow-up video um when was it on february 5th i had did a video talking about stocks and stocks that channel and basically how to play them what to look for in that video i talked about apxt and there were just AP, i talked about apxt alibaba crm uh, as well as JetBlue, so we're going to quickly go over what I spoke what I spoke last time. And like I like I had said in that video, that when you see stocks trading typically within a channel, and you know your lowest price point is going to be around fifteen dollars. Like for example, in APXT. And as you can see, like I said in my previous video, what happened? Lo and behold, the stock low of the day was fifteen oh three, right? Because there's no catalyst. And so when there's no catalyst to drive the stock, like for example, a merger, a buyout, um, maybe a new CEO who previously had a company um, that was, that he took to, you know, high valuation, right? Or, uh, you know, better than expected earnings. There has to be something that's gonna drive the stock either up or down, right? So APXT, says the CEO left, right? The stock might, if they had a good CEO, the stock may fall on the news with increasing volume. And so these are things that you want to pay attention to. Again, it, it, it only really matters if you're either day or swing trading. If you're a long-term investor, then typically what you would do is if you were dollar cost averaging, then you would dollar cost average basically at the low points of the channel instead of just say like, which is what I do with my account, instead of just putting in money at certain like, and just let it automatically auto invest into where I want it. I typically look at the charts of the stocks that I have within my account and I wait till they come to price points where I feel that there are bargains. And so instead of just allocating, you know, a hundred or 500 or a thousand and it just gets equally redistributed into my account, I pick, I pick the stocks that I want to add to based off of where I see the stock in the chart. And so like I had said last time, um, in JetBlue, like I said, JetBlue, right? JetBlue for, for the most part, like I said, $16 is a very hard area where the stock is not going to break above without some sort of callous, callous like I said. Either they get a um, maybe a new bailout that might push them up. Uh, the government has already stated that they're not going to give bailouts to the airlines, at least not, especially not to American airlines. And what they're, what they did say was that Joe Biden's, uh, 1.9 trillion stimulus package for the government would bail out the people, right? Cause they will give them either unemployment money, et cetera, but it wouldn't have bail out basically zombie companies like for example, American airlines. And so for a company like JetBlue or for any airlines for that matter, to be able to break out of uh, resistance areas, it would need some sort of a catalyst, which is why I said in that video that I was going to be selling a third of my position because we were basically at the high of, of the channel and there was no reason for me to not take profits because my goal is to hold this. I'm not holding JetBlue long-term. My goal is basically if JetBlue gets back into the 20s, then I will basically cut, uh, basically sell it, take 50 or 60% on my money, but during that time period, because I missed last time, like I said in that video, last time I had missed the opportunity uh, to sell here and then I had to wait. Unfortunately, I waited, I could have sold it over here, but I waited a little bit too long. And of course, on this particular candle, I decided to sell it. And as you can see, like I said in that video, because we really didn't get really good volume, again, we got regular volume on that day. And what happened? The stock sold off. There was no cat catalyst, no news. And so what happened? The stock naturally goes back below its resistance. Same thing with uh, with BABA, right? I talked about BABA and 266 being your resistance. And as you can see, BABA broke out. Not only did BABA break out here, it also broke out here. But if you look at the volume, right? The volume on the, on the volume over here was actually pretty high, 44 million shares. The average volume being uh, 21.6, 21.6 6 million but the market couldn't hold. And so when I saw Baba basically do 16 million, if, if, if Baba couldn't hold with 44 million shares, more than likely without some sort of a catalyst, it was not going to hold. And so I didn't add more to my position. And of course, the very next day, we see Baba then trading below. And if you actually watched it during the daytime, we'll look at it on the five minute, you can see that multiple times where it came up to 
266s it immediately sold off at the open from 266 you can basically see that right there and of course uh, during this what 30 minute or so time period every time the stock came to 266 what did it do it sold it sold off we see another rally at the end of the day but more than likely either volume will have to volume will have to come in that will sustain the stock to the upside or there's going to be some sort of news uh, either coming out of china or uh, coming out of alibaba itself giving it the momentum that it needs basically to trade up to the upside crm was the other stock that we talked about and as you can see for the most part we're getting continued small volume typically the volume is below average as you can see right here 7 million 5 million 4 million and 5 million the average volume is 7.8 million so on a day like this where i see the stock already trading for the past several trading days i would i personally would wait i know there's going to be resistance right here at 240 you should be able to see that right here where we basically held 240 came back multiple days and eventually we gapped through uh, 240 try to come back up to 230 the stock couldn't hold it and then eventually came back up as you can see right here so more than likely what i'm thinking is that there's going to be a red candle day where we might retest the 230s and that would be the day where i would typically want to add to my position whatever i have allocated for this particular stock if i've got 200 300 500 etc that's basically what I would do me personally on how to trade these support and resistance and paying attention, of course, to channels. In this particular stock, you can see this stock also basically traded between what looks like 270 and we could comfortably say 240. So in a stock like this, when you start to notice it, these are multiple periods where you're taking, you could potentially take 30 points every time you choose, you went to go long. Of course, buying it at the low end of the channel to minimize your risk giving it you know a couple of percentage points because you always have to give room uh for so you have to always have to give a little bit of wiggle room in the stocks sometimes like for example we'll take a look at apxt apxt the exact same thing right where for the most part it held uh, 15 dollars, but you can also see that it created for itself a little mini resistance at around 14.50 you can see that right here where we basically did finally break through and immediately the stock popped back up so you always have to give a little bit of wiggle room in the stock and not just basically utilize these hard and fast numbers for yourself and of course this makes it much easier when you're swing trading makes it much a little bit slower and of course the most important thing when you're trading via channels is that you have to be patient and wait for your wait for your prices right i can't buy you know 1450s and then have the stock basically trade all the way down to 1450s which would be my next area but i might see some buying and then the stock continues to go lower and then i basically lose more money you basically want to try to get stock as close to the bottom of the channel another example is for example <coughs> another example is of course neo neo another stock right here right the stock the as you can see the support being 55s for the most part neo could not break 55 you should be able to see that here 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 and here and then finally it broke out and then eventually the stock retested here 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 and here so neo could break up to the upside but since you know you have a very small um channel the channel for the most part looks like right here right so between $60 and $55, since you know that's basically the channel that you're stuck in, you just play the channel. I buy 55s, I wait. If it moves higher, I could wait. I could wait for 60s, I could wait for 58s, I could wait for 59s. It all depends on how much you're willing to risk, how long you're willing to hold. It could take one day, it could take two days. You could see the stock trade back down. It's entirely up to you. This is typically how I trade most positions. But again, the most important thing when trading this way is patience, waiting for your prices on both sides, waiting for my in and waiting for my out. And then just basically rinse repeating. And the only reason that we can particularly do this is because, as you can see, the market is basically trading in a channel. Right. And so since the market is trading in a channel, that means you can typically basically go back to many of these positions that you've uh, traded before. Palantir, you can see Palantir again, or Palantir, another one, where for from the better part of mid-November all the way to about January, you could have basically traded in and out of this channel, which is what I did. I traded Palantir in and out of the channel up until it broke out. Same thing 
Um, same thing, for example, with um, with APXT. I traded I traded APXT multiple times, where I sold it at 17, and again I sold it again here. Then I went short. Then I went long, etc. Right. So this is you don't have to basically take huge positions. If you're a small trader, it works out just fine. Minimizing your risk and doing your best to maximize maximize the reward. And so the easiest way to do that, and the most important way, via patience, and of course paying attention to support and resistances. For me, again, unless outside of some news, many stocks are going to trade this way. You don't have to constantly be looking for news back and forth. Pay attention to the stocks. Do you recognize a channel? Trade the channel.